have received the governor's uh, budget address this afternoon. Uh, quite frankly, uh, we always say in the legislature that it is the devil in the detail. And we heard the governor sketch out for us the broad brush. There are some things that we heard that we liked. There were some things that uh, no explanation was provided for. And succinctly, in the next few days, we will probably be formally responding to some of the issues that the governor identified. Uh, many of the things that the governor identified uh, this afternoon in terms of um, the legislature's inaction, uh, we, we've sent uh, several of the bills the governor identified today uh, to his desk, and he chose to veto them. Um, we are very pleased to hear that he has decided to expand Medicaid. There are 1.3 million uninsured people in this state. This expansion will provide access to health care for 300,000 people, approximately. School aid, uh, we know that we potentially will see an increase in school aid to 400 districts. Uh, we're glad to see any investment in education. Higher education, uh, he has indicated that he has ticked up the budget. We don't know the detail. And he did make mention that the independents and the privates would benefit. We're glad to hear that he's prepared to do that. Uh, the governor um, was very silent on the issue of earned income tax credit, that we are very disappointed that uh, along with addressing vulnerable populations such as the developmental disabilities community and others, he did not think about the people in this state who are earning below the poverty level. Uh, the governor had indicated last year in his budget that he was willing to move towards earned income tax credit. I am certain that in the coming days we will be able to dissect uh, more succinctly some of the proposals he set before us. I know that uh, the budget chairman uh, has set up his schedule of budget hearings and uh, we're certain that uh, we will then uh, be able to determine whether we can work in a bipartisan fashion as the governor indicated. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, the Majority Leader, Lou Greenwald, to provide you with some remarks. Madam Speaker, thank you. Uh, as you all know, this is really the beginning of the process for the budget hearing. It's not what really is as much said today as what we find out in the days ahead. And we are very confident with the leadership of our budget chairman, Vincent Prieto, that that process will begin in earnest. Today, in many respects, I think we heard much of what was the criticism from the governor that people act in a partisan fashion. I think we heard very much a Republican platform speech. I'm not quite sure that we have the same definition of success or right course that this state is on. Today, we stand here today after three years of Republican rule in the, in the front office, and we have unemployment rate at 9.6 percent, which is where it was when the governor took office. It is an unemployment rate that hovers near double digits, almost 2 percent higher than the national average, and clearly much higher than all of our neighboring states. We have a, a governor today who promised, and the Republican Party who promised that they were given control of the front office, they would find the answer and restore rebates to citizens. And part of what we heard in our briefing this morning was that they are going to push almost $400 million in rebates to senior citizens into next year's budget. So when the governor stands before us today and the Republican Party stands and applauds the concept of a, uh, a tax cut that would overwhelmingly benefit the 1 percent, we are still stuck. In this, uh, in this ideological struggle between the Democrat and Republican Party, where this state overwhelmingly rejected trickle-down economics last November and overwhelmingly re-elected our president. The reality is, if you can't afford to fully fund the rebate, if you have to move almost $400 million in rebates to seniors from this year to next year, why would we be entertaining an income tax cut that overwhelmingly benefits 1 percent of the population? You know, the real problem in this state, as many of you have reported, is the continued failure to roll up our sleeves and to address the core problem that this state faces, which is the over-reliance on property taxes, which this governor, once again, in the Republican Party, continues to fail to address. Because the truth of the matter is, it's just too hard. It's too hard for them to take this issue on, and it's easier to play to the soundbite solutions. I agree. The governor stood there today and said that he is going to support. I'm glad to hear that he's finally going to support uh, the Medicaid portion of the President's Affordable Health Care Act. It will help uh, tens of thousands of citizens 
throughout this state. It builds upon a successful program that we were so proud to endorse and support around family care and kid care. And the reality is that that is the right thing to do. He's doing it almost begrudgingly. The reality is that he needs to find that same type of dedication here to address the core problems that this state faces when we have to tackle the fact that we have stagnant unemployment, we have record high property taxes, we have the highest property taxes in the nation. We have property taxes that are even higher today because of the actions and the recommendation to push those rebates in the next year. And we have no long-term answer or solution to that number one crisis, which is why New Jersey's unemployment rate is continue to remain as high as it is, which is why New Jersey's economy continues to struggle. So look, today is the beginning of the process. We are, uh, we are highly charged to turn this over to our budget chairman. We believe that hopefully he will be shown the respect of the treasurer coming in to testify and that the treasurer will answer the questions uh, that this committee has you know, so wanton to uh, present to him and to this administration to work in a bipartisan fashion to find the answers that we so desperately need. So with that, I would like to uh, turn it over to our budget chairman and really begin this process for him in the days and weeks ahead. <coughs> Thank you, Majority Leader. And as the um, Speaker Majority Leader said, today is the beginning. And obviously, in this budget, we heard some good things. And obviously, making our pension payment is very important. And we want to make sure that that's in there. We actually heard about Medicaid uh, expansion, which is all great. But we didn't hear about the Earned Income Tax Credit. That actually was in last year's budget uh, to, uh, speech, but it was not in that budget. It was supposed to be in this one. We did not hear about that. We actually heard about, you know, with gimmicks. And as the majority leader talked about this morning in the briefing that I got, the rebates are being pushed over into next year. And when you talk about gimmicks and fiscal responsibility, and you're trying to take and talk about a tax cut, something we were actually prudent, and it's not we didn't want a tax cut, and let's be clear on that. Last year, we all wanted a tax cut, but we wanted to make sure that the revenue came in. And as we stand here today, the revenue did not come in. And that's why almost $400 million are being pushed over into next year form the rebates. So those are some of the things that I see. I saw in this speech a recap blaming prior administrations, but I can tell you, uh, candidate Christie actually talked about restoring the rebates fully. Now we're actually pushing them and not actually doing them this year. We actually talked about um, uh, lowering taxes. I haven't seen taxes lowered. We've actually curtailed the way they've grown, and as I said, 20% in the last three years. And that's unacceptable. Our problem is property taxes, and we need to get to the core. The most vulnerable people in the state of New Jersey right now are not going to see any type of relief, while the 1%, we talk about raising taxes. He talked about 115 taxes raised. He's using every single penny of that in this budget. So don't, you know, let's be clear. You know, you can say one thing, but it's what you're doing. You're actually using them. So we want to make sure the people that could afford, you know, to pay into it, those are the people that should be. You shouldn't be doing it on the back of the people that are most vulnerable and pushing off until next year what you have to do this year. And maybe if we would have had early on uh, hearings, we could have figured out how to not work with a gimmick and push it till next year. So I'm uh, game for this process. It's just the beginning. There is some good things, but as the speaker said, the devil is in the details. We actually have to see the document. We've only seen, you know, got a briefing. We haven't seen anything written yet. We will be studying, and I look forward to working with uh, everybody in a bipartisan way to make sure we do the right things for all the residents of the state of New Jersey. Thank you. One of the things I would like to mention in terms of going forward in the budget committees in the respective houses, uh, the governor we know is going to propose that uh, he um, utilize approximately $1.2 billion for infrastructure transportation improvement without borrowing. That takes us back to the old conversation of the Transportation Trust Fund. We're very interested in seeing where that $1.2 billion will come from. In the briefing that he provided to the leadership, he indicated that it is, quote, savings that have been realized from the refinancing of debt. This budget also only dedicates 7 percent to debt payment. We want to see how that gets to be realized. Uh, the governor is proposing the elimination of the hospital stabilization fund. 
Uh, he's got a proposal to provide relief to the safety net hospitals in uh, pr predominantly urban areas. We have to take a close examination of that. So as you can see, there are a number of things that were not touched upon in the budget address, but we know that they are things that are critical to various constituencies in the state.